Yes, go ahead. You want to say something? Um, well, saying even just you know throwing a quote in between the conversation is like another small like style or another way of showing this. Not only is there a conversation, but there's you know other places that this is going. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it becomes like what you were talking about earlier, says you're the the quote the rule of the undetermined is itself undetermined. This 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 junction that's thrown in in the middle of the conversation. And so I'm wondering, but the, well, here's an interesting question then, doesn't, then the whole thing becomes a gesture, to see, or a series of gestures. And then, yeah, go ahead. If I may, it's, I'm not sure whether it's a parody or a pastiche, but in a certain sense, the roles have been inverted. Because, what is it, how do you say that, the bow, the bod? Tibble, I'd say. Tibble, I'd say. Tibble. Tibble keeps trying to interject. He's not just saying yes or no. He mm -hmm. keeps on trying to steer things. To yes. determine things mm -hmm. for the most part, which is the opposite role. Usually it's, you know, the, the sophist, the specific dialogues, it's the, the one who does all the speaking, he's the one who produces truth, and then the interlocutor is the one who simply says, yes, that's true, or mm -hmm. no, it's not true. So in a certain sense, the roles are inverted. Facilitator in an academic conference, you just want to keep making them talk more and look good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, um, the reason why I brought up gestures because sometimes I've, well, I've read critiques of postmodern thinking saying, well, the whole thing is just a big gesture. It's just, it's just a way of doing something for something else. And uh, Gesture is before speech, right? Yeah. We think. Well, it's, it's an idea. Yeah. 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 Um, Leroy Gorin has written a big book on this, this uh, gesture and speech, which uh, uh, Jerry Don picks up and talks about very early in uh, Great Mythology, you know, tipping his, his hat, his uh, cap to him. Um, it's a brilliant book. It, it, it's just out of sight. Um, and um, a number of other people also refer to him as well. Uh, since we're talking about gestures, I'm mentioning that. And this may very well be a gesture. It may be very, very appropriate to call it that. And another person who's talking about talking about gestures really quite intelligently is, uh, and excitingly is uh, Agamben in um, potentialities, but also in means without ends. He talks about silent film as without speech, and so how does one communicate through gestures? And then you do get sound, and you get the, you know, the people who use gestures so much, uh, like the Marx Brothers, the other Marxists. And um, he, um, uh, Giorgio talks about that, you know, all the gestures, too, and then the mute. Okay. Hit, what's his name? Hit, not hit, what's it? The Marx Brother who can't speak, but he... Harpo. Harpo, yes. Um, he makes sounds. He's got these, these sounds to make. So, um, um, so that would be another place to go to try to enter this, this particular uh, discussion. But it's very, very complex, and it opens up um, in an ongoing conversation. It's like when it's not going to end. There are seven days here, but it's not going to end. Okay. No one's going to win either. Okay. It's not possible. So. You were saying about my libidinal economy that it's mode of writing? Well, we're, we're, what was said? Well, we're getting that here, the answer here. But he speaks in as much as having been spoken to. Okay. This is very important to him. He's going to map it out later. And you have it in the notes. Do you have your notes? Mm -hmm. This is it right here. I didn't draw the lines here. It's in page two of the notes. Okay. The addresser. Right here, okay? And he gets a double play out of this. This is the person, this is the audience, or the decoder, if you wish, okay? <clears throat> um, and when I, when I gave this to you, I layered possible ways of reading it, okay? I could have created four different triangles, but I just, I, I put them together as a composite, so that can throw you off, you know, because some of these things are in conflict with each other. <clears throat> um, and then the reference, or reality down here, and then the code, 
and the code is going, this, this is going, going to determine everything. Okay. But he opens up as, as an addressee, which has two gains. It's uh, the addressee as in obligation. That's the Moses um, game. Or the addressee as in reception. That's the pagan game. And so what he's opening up with here is an example of a pagan game. Okay. There's no God here to oblige him. There's no, although he mentions this possibility, Levi Nas' notion of the other calling, and there's something of an obligation then to respond, okay? But he's, and he, you know, he, he pays respect to Levinas here, but he's not uh, a Levinas person, okay? He's saying something else that's really quite fundamentally different. Okay. So in a certain sense, he really is trying to subvert that. It's on pages four and five when he starts talking about the Platonic dialectic, who we mean about power of the one who speaks wants to control mm -hmm. the, the uh, content of the statement so it can be returned in a way that is you know, controllable, recognizable, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's, it's that uh, paragraph beginning this kind of writing. Yeah. And what is, being what is being produced here are effects. So, when they go back to the libidinal economy, that's what they're talking about. How is someone supposed to read this? It's all rhetoric? It's a nothing but a scandal? How does one approach it and get inside and start arguing against it or for it? Where do you put your oar to get upstream? Okay. This is what it's all about. This is not a conventional way of writing philosophy, is what Tibble is saying. Okay. And, of course, uh, Leo Farnos is, and this is his purpose. Okay. And he's, he's very open, uh, claiming that this is the way that, that a particular way that a pagan is writing. And what are the rules? I make them up as I go along. There are no criteria. But he is drawing on previous literature. So we can say that he's creating, that the object now is an object of post-criticism, which means he's building, let's say, a collage of sorts, of different this and that and so on, okay? But it's not modernism in this, in, there's confusion here between this work and um, the postmodern condition that he wrote. Okay? And there is a footnote, um, where is it? Page 16 or so, I think. Yeah, about this confusion. On the bottom left, page, uh, page 16, about these terms. We'll get to that in a minute. <coughs> um, That modernism, if you take Eliot, we were talking about T.S. Eliot in the Wasteland, what it is is a series of, um, um, it's a parody. It could be seen as a parody or it can be read as a, a pastiche. But there's a certain amount of nostalgia in that. Do you know the Wasteland? Mm -hmm. It's made up of bits and pieces, right? Yeah. Uh, fragments here, some imagined and so on, put together in, in, in a, a very powerful way. But it's all based, predicated on the notion of lack, on, on negative, on the negative. Here, this is not. This is the impossible, is the place to be. We don't want consensus. What we want is dissensus, or what? Paralogy. That's the term he uses. That's how he argues against, quote, argues, against um, Habermas. Okay. And what is paralogy? I've been performing. I have turned myself into a post-critical object. Do you know who wrote that article? Uh, Greg Omer, he's on the faculty here. He teaches at the University of Florida in Gainesville. Where what you do, if you're going to teach something, you can, for example, is, or critique something. You, let's say you want to critique a film. You make a film to critique a film. Okay? Mm -hmm. You don't sit down and write an essay. So you become that object. Or if you're going to teach something, you can do it, you know, very analytically, okay, and say, number one, we're doing this, number two, we're doing this, or you can perform the very thing, mirror the very thing that you're talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I taught uh, um, an undergraduate course at the University of Texas um, uh, in Arlington, and 
it was for our students who were going to teach English, okay. composition, whatever. Okay, but mostly writing and that kind of thing. <coughs> and I selected particular people. I selected uh, Friere, I selected um, um, the plural on is the author. And it's someone who's totally unconscious is the author, okay, <laughs> um, and a number of other people as well. And, and, and I told them up front, now I'm going, when we talk about this particular book, I am going to perform the author of this book and what he or she is doing. And then I move to the next one, okay, so the Friere was very open, and, you know, and I just... Point, you know, people got together and they appointed little groups, okay, think groups, and then got back and discussed the book that way, okay. Um, but when I got to the person whose name I cannot remember, I became totally authoritative. And this is what this person does in the book. And his book is set up with 16 chapters of each week meeting with students, okay, and how he makes fun of them and tries to, you know, piss them off so that they will, you know, respond, try to create an exigency for them, so that they will respond, and I did that. Okay. And then the others as well, but the students somehow or another forgot that I was doing that. <laughs> that you know, they were in, in the reviews, you know, the assessment, well, you know, he started out being really sort of, kind of radically democratic, and then all of a sudden he became this monster. This and, you know, <clears throat> and, and, you know, and I thought, well, how did, how did, how did that happen? Because I kept saying, no. Let me remind you, like I'm doing it here, okay? Do you know where we're going with this? Okay. So we're, it, it's, it's more like a, um, turning a gestalt switch. You don't see something there. And, after, and, and I can repeat something over and over and over. It's just through pure repetition that the switch gets turned. I can't tell you, this is how you turn the switch. Because it's an absolute insight. And then you begin to see that. The foreground and the background. You can do it easily. Okay. So you have the, the base that can be a, a base or two faces. What's the third term in there that we haven't seen yet? We usually stop at two. What's the third one that's missing? I don't know. I'm asking. Have you thought, well, what's the other image that's in there? And I'm stuck in my culture, and of course I'm going to see a base. Vases are not that universal. Okay. And two faces that close together. In certain cultures, you don't do that, right? But what else? What else is in there that I haven't seen yet? 